Let's look at the volatility side of things. Um, spot price is obviously stuck in this pretty tight range, 16.5 to 17.5 on Bitcoin, 12.30 to 13.10 on ETH over the last week. So realize vol has continued to grind its way lower. So that's the yellow line on these charts that you can see. Um, so actually making new lows, right? Getting onto a 20 handle for Bitcoin Realize, which is unbelievable, is actually realizing less than NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ's realizing 30 something now. Uh, and Ethereum realizing around 50. Um, so vols getting battered. Now you can see that the trajectory of implied vols, whilst it's down, it's not quite as dramatic because they're not really going to let the implieds go down to 30 on Bitcoin, right? They might do it into Christmas, but right now they're not really letting implies drop much below 50. And that's why we see quite big carry, which is the red bars. We're seeing carry at about 20 vol points across both Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is saying that the implied realized gap is worth about 20 vol points, which as a percentage of the at the monies, which Bitcoin at 50 and Ethereum at like 70, that's a pretty juicy amount of carry that's available for people who want to be short gamma right now. But right now it looks like the dealers are short gamma, but the end users are too scared to sell any gamma right now. So the dealers are actually doing pretty well because they're sitting there earning time decay. They're short all these options. So there's no point in them marking these options down and then getting lifted out of their positions. They'd rather keep them conservatively marked, keep vols marked at 50 and 70 on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And while they sit there realizing 20 vols under, they get to collect the time decay. So that's kind of where we're at, right? Dealers have been taken out of local gamma and they're marking it, they're keeping it marked high because they, they want to be earning that money through time decay rather, rather than trying to trying to call it down and get lifted out of even more volatility, basically, right? Because there may well be some buyers around to play the events that are coming up next week. Uh, okay. Um, and like I said, I do expect that risk premium to stay, right? I, I think the way the gap closes is by realized bouncing, probably not by implied coming down in the next week because we have got CPI, FOMC, things like that still to contend with. Um, okay. Uh, now if we look at re uh, term structure, so you can see here, Bitcoin kind of unchanged on the week, not doing a whole lot. Very steep already, as you can see. Uh, we've got that front end near 45, and then we've got that back end six month stuff above 60. It's a pretty steep curve already. Uh, Ethereum curve uh, was a bit flatter. Uh, we're seeing uh, that medium term 30 day to 60 day area getting hit the most, um, as that was still in the 80s. Uh, so that's coming down a bit. Uh, it did pop a little bit last week when we when we tested 1150. That's that's when it kind of popped into the 80s and and is getting slammed straight back down as as we haven't really gone anywhere and we haven't broken down. Uh, looking at the uh, spread between Ethereum and Bitcoin implied, uh, we're seeing that spread at around 20 vols in the front and around 15 in the back. I have been saying I'd like to buy that sub 10, so it's still got a little room to go to get below 10. Um, but I think it might get there into year end if things go quiet and then I, I'd be in a position to scoop some of that spread up ready for next year, uh, maybe in March expiry, June expiry, something like that, depending, depending where, where it trades. Uh, but that, that'll probably, a decent, probably be a decent setup for next year where you can get some uh, Ethereum risk on the book, Ethereum volatility on the book, that is. Um, okay, so that's kind of uh, what I'm seeing in term structure. If we move on to SKU. Uh, SKU continuing to soften um, as obviously the, 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 the sell-off not really accelerating or even continuing as we're seeing this resilience in spot prices. So uh, Bitcoin skewed down three and a half on the week, Ethereum down six. Uh, that's on the one month 25 delta. Um, but we did say, right, if SKU continues to come down from here, it's not going to collapse. It's going to grind down from here. And that is what we are seeing basically, right? Because because it's not, it's, you know, there needs to be a reason for SKU to really flip for calls and we haven't really had that catalyst yet, basically. So SKU just kind of pricing lower because we're not we're not we're not breaking to the downside. Uh, we are seeing put selling flows that are helping drive that SKU down. Um, at the money vols look quite low, so it's less less attractive to sell the at the monies now. So you kind of want to sell the more expensive stuff, which is that downside, which is helping that SKU come back down. Um, and then obviously the the call buying. If we do get a break higher, um, then you would get short-term call buying generally, and that, that drives that skew flatter as well. Um, Front-end weekly skew is leading that flattening, like I said, because we do get that bid for short day and upside when the market looks strong. But at the moment, it kind of looks strong and then, and then fizzles out and doesn't go anywhere. So even buying those calls hasn't really been working unless you sell them out pretty much hours later because you've had a little bit of an intraday move. Okay, So that's not really the sort of trade I'm, I'm into these days. 
Um, I, I tend to hold options longer than a few hours, uh, but that seems to be what you need to be doing at the moment if you're playing that upside. Um, medium term skew behaving more sticky, which is to be expected. Uh, traders expect you know relief rallies in crypto are going to be short lived. The ultimate bottom probably isn't in yet, so then you know you would still want to have more medium term hedges in the book against your crypto holdings, which is why that skew is not about to collapse in in the middle part of the curve. I, I suspect. Okay. Right, um, dashboards, you can uh, peruse in your own time. Uh, as you can see here, kind of already covered uh, the major moves. Nothing really to add there. Uh, if we move on to crypto flows, we can see um, put selling uh, flows, as I've mentioned, in December. So the 14K and 15K area getting sold. Um, that's, that's, you know, that, that's the more meaty puts, uh, whereas the further out the money stuff, like the 12 12K puts getting bought as part of a strangle. Um, so 12K, 21K strangle getting bought in December. Uh, there's a bit of bargain hunting there for volatility as those wings um, you know, don't bleed so badly because uh, they're quite low premium. And just in case this market does break out of the range, volatility has got some room to spike. So that's kind of the logic behind buying those strangles. Um, and then 16th of December, which is next Friday, uh, which captures FOMC and CPI and has the most get, most gamma sensitivity to those catalysts, uh, we did see a straddle buyer on the 17K strike there uh, for that maturity. Uh, in Ethereum flows, um, we are seeing Ethereum still managing to induce more upside interest, uh, unlike Bitcoin. So people are still there believing that Ethereum's got more upside. Um, Maybe it does, but it just needs a catalyst, right? At the moment, it looks like Matic's getting more benefit because it's the layer two solution, but the actual base layer of Ethereum isn't really rallying right now for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's still the overhang from the likes of FTX and Almeda and things like that. Um, 9th of December, 1,300 calls were bought, uh, as were regular December 1,500s, but they were already, uh, they were taking profit on pretty sharpish like i say that seems to be the way you need to play it right now if you're using that short dated gamma to play upside um 30th of december way out of the money stuff the 2500 calls they were bought in good size you can see that purple bar that was a big clip trading there over 10,000 lots um march 23 calls uh call spreads sorry call ratios call spreads those type of structures being bought so people trying to that way out of the money march stuff, but not take on too much Vega exposure because the curve is upward sloping. Um, and then Vols, uh, despite all that buying flow that we've kind of seen, uh, whilst that 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 sort of area of 1400 to 1800 is a bit more mixed in terms of flow two way, but in terms of that buying flow that I've highlighted around the around these charts, uh, we are we have still seen Vols drifting lower despite the buyers basically, right? So because it's just not realizing, right? It doesn't matter if you can have as much buying as you want, but the thing's not realizing, market makers are happy to sell it to you and then gradually it's going to grind its way lower because that's that's the nature of, of volatility. So, you know, look, crypto is an exciting place to be. It's had a tough time, but right now, I think buying this little dip makes sense. I think there's some explosive potential in the short term and volatility has been hammered. So you're getting some decent leverage in some of these upside calls. If you think we might get a light CPI, Arguably, crypto is the place to play it, basically, right? So anyway, that's that's your crypto weekly. Do what you got to do. Be careful out there, and good luck. <laughs>